the skills required to take notes effectively are useful outside the classroom as well taking food good notice mostly about understanding the gist of whatever information you are making the note of and preserving it in a format that would make it easy for you to recall the original information taking notes is a way of managing information by breaking it down into easily understandable chunks this means that a good note taker will have the skill to summarize and condense the information into smaller bits notes are never a verbatim account the original information you should try to adhere to a sensible format while taking notes if you cannot understand what you have not down then your notes will be useless the sign of a well made note is that it will help you recall the lecture or the speech even after a considerable amount of time making notes of everything you watch and refer is a good habit for students and researchers this will help you avoid plagiarism and will also help you to cite your sources more effectively let us now look at a few strategies for making effective a notes identify inf- important information as you are reading or watching a test or listening to a lecturer to be on the lookout for important bits of information this will be the source material for your notes making notes is as much about preserving important information as it is about discarding superfluous information if you feel that a certain part of in this video or lecture is not relevant for you you can safely omit making a note of it this means that you should always be a good judge of what is useful information and what is not look for structure after you have identified the information you want to make a note of the next step is to look at a, how the original information has been structured looking for structure helps you understand the author has chosen to present the topic to the reader or the listener if the way the original information is presented is important to how it is understand then you might want to preserve the same structure in your note as well note down your observations notes are not entirely just piece of information that you have taken from some source your own opinions and comments on the information are also very important part of your notes do not forget to jot down your ideas or what you think about the material you are making a note on make sure that you are able to distinguish between your comments and other information use symbols since notes often need to be taken down quickly using symbols or abbreviation is a good strategy to adopt diagrams and mind maps a picture is worth a thousand words sometimes ideas can be better expressed as a picture or diagram depending on the kind of information contained in your note you may choose to represent it as a picture instead mind maps are visual representation of data and help you to recall information easily for example in a mind map you can use arrows to indicate the relationship between ideas things to remember check whether your note is brief enough do they cover all the main points use abbreviations or symbols to shorten the length of the note is the logical structure of the original material captured in your notes 
be sure to add your opinions or comments to the note writing block one of the most fascinating ways in which the internet has changed the way in which people read and write is through blogging blog is a shortened form of the web log or web blog the web you know as refers to the internet and a log is personal journal or record events maintained by person essentially a blog is a personal website which contains posts on any subject chosen by the author keeping a blog is called blogging and the person who does this is a blogger blogs have become immensely popularly and can be counted as an important medium in its own right even though most blogs are maintained by individuals there are blogs which have multiple authors these blogs are often focused on a particular topic and will have multiple contributors posting their views on the topic such blogs are called multi authors blogs there are many reasons why people keep blogs the simplest of this may be to keep a record one's day to day life however blogs are not limited to what one experiences first hand there are blogs reviewing books and movies blogs on hobbies and past times blogs on health care and self improvement the fact that the subject matter of blog is virtually unlimited is one of its most attractive features this also means that blogs are generally not under censorship or control even while under repressive governance bloggers continue to express their views and opinions freely online another feature of blogs is that they are interactive in nature blogs have profoundly influenced the relationship between writers and their audience in the internet age while other media like printed books and magazines are more or less passive blogs can be an active forum of discussion with interactions going on between the blogger and the readers perhaps the most important reason why blogs are so popular is that it is so easy to start blogging you do not need any specified qualification to start written a blog all you need is working internet connection and some free time as you have already watched in this video the indian constitution recognizes all indians as equal before the law and states that no person can be discriminated against because of their religion sex caste or whether they are rich or poor all adults in india have the equal right to vote during elections and this power over the ballot box ballot box has been used by people to elect or replace their representatives but this feeling of equality that the ballot box provides because the vote of one person is as good as that of another does not extend to most people lives as you have read 
the increasing privatization of health services and the neglect of government hospitals have made it difficult for most poor people like Canada Canada Hakim Shelk and Amen to get good quality health care these people do not have the resources to afford expensive private health services similarly the man who sells juice does not have the resources to complete compete with all of the major companies who sell branded drinks through expensive advertising sopana does not have sufficient resources to grow cotton and so has to take a loan from the trader to grow her crop this forces her to sell her cotton at a lower price melani like the millions of domestic workers across the country he is forced to endure the insults and hardship of working as a domestic help because she has no resource to set up something on her own poverty and the lack of resource continue to be a key reason why so many pupils live in india are highly unequal on the other hand the ansaris were discriminated against not because they did not have the resource in fact despite having the money to pay the required rent they are not able to find an apartment for over a month people were reluctant to lease them an apartment because of their religion similarly the main reason that the teachers forced om prakash valmiki to sweep the school yard was because he was dalit you have also read that the work woman do is often considered of less value than that done by the men all of these persons are discriminated against primarily because of their social and cultural background as well as because they are women discrimination on the basis of a person's religion caste and sex is another significant factor for why people are treated unequally in india open poverty and lack of dignity and respect for certain communities and groups come together in such powerful ways that it is difficult to identify where one aspect of inequality ends and the other begins as you have read dalit advised and muslim girls 
ड्रॉप ड्रॉप आउट ऑफ स्कूल इन लार्ज नंबर्स दिस इज ए कॉम्बाइंड आउटकम ऑफ पॉवर्टी सोशल डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एंड द लैक ऑफ गुड क्वालिटी स्कूल फैसिलिटीज फॉर दीज कम्युनिटीज स्ट्रगल स्ट्रगल्स फॉर इक्वालिटी थ्रो आउट द वेलड इन एवरी कम्युनिटी विलेज सिटी एंड टाउन यू विल फाइंड दैट देर आर सम पीपल हु आर नॉन एंड रेस्पेक्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ देयर फाइट फॉर क्वालिटी इक्वालिटी दीज पीपल मै हाव स्टूड अगेंस्ट एंड एक्ट ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन दैट दे फेस्ड और विच दे विटनेसड और दे मै बी वेल रेस्पेक्टेड बिकॉज दे ट्रीट ऑल पेर्स with dignity and r therefore trusted and called upon to resolve issues in the community often some of these persons become more widely recognized because they have the support or represent large numbers of people who have united to address a particular issue of inequality in india there are several struggles in which people have come together to fight for issues that they believe are important you watch about the method methods used by the women's movement to raise issues of equality the tawa master sang in madhya pradesh is another example of people coming to the to fight for an issue there are many such struggles such as those among bd workers fisher folk agriculture struggles for equality in this video you have watch about people like kanda da and saris melani and sopna the thread that connects all of these leaves is that they have been treated unequally what to do people do when they face such inequalities history is full of examples of persons who have come together to fight against inequality and for issues of justice do you recall the story of rosa parks in video do you remember the photo is he on the women's movement in this video you will learn about some of the ways in which people have struggled against inequality markets around us we go to the market to buy many things vegetables soap toothpaste masala bread rice dal clothes notebooks biscuits etc 
if we make a list of the goods that we purchase it would be really long there are many kinds of markets that we may visit for our everyday needs this can include shops houses stalls in our neighborhood a weekly market a large shopping complex perhaps even a mall in this video we look at some of these markets and try to understand how the goods that are sold there reach buyers who these buyers are who these sellers are and the source of problems they face teachers note these two video focus on aspects of life and commercial cycles associated with the markets while some of these process may be visible and therefore easily observable there are also others that are relatively unfamiliar discusses markets this video discusses markets around us at one level we study different market cities a weekly market neighborhood shops a shopping complex etc at another level we explore the indirect question how do goods reach this markets we examine how a chain of markets operates and the role of all sale markets within this throw the case study of a all sale vegetable market we usually associate market with market places but buying and selling takes place in diverse ways and the chapter and the video discusses how all of this falls within a larger understanding of markets video looks at how markets offer people different opportunities this is done through the story of a shirt and the chain of markets involved in the process together with understanding each step of the manufacture and circulation of a shirt we release that some people stand to gain in the market transaction whereas others do not gain as much or no one at all the opportunities are highly unequal ways do exist such as those of cooperative marketing which can provide a better return to the producers however we need to find many more viable avenues for equitable distribution this video offer any uh, 
an opportunity of bringing in the experience of local markets for discussion in the classroom a visit to, to a wholesale market would, would be a of interest and would allow the learner to find out the profit margins and the details of daily earning so that those in quantity in qualities can be directly examined the experiences of markets are varied and also quite rich hence one should allocate time for some questions not addressed in the text which students may wish to discuss all the best what makes india a federal country we have earlier seen how small countries like belgium and sri lanka face so many problems of managing diversity what about a vast country like india with so many languages religions and regions what are the power sharing arrangements in our country let us begin with the constitution india had emerged as an independent nation after a painful and bloody partition soon after independence several princely several princely states became a part of the country the constitution declared india as a union of states although it did not use the word federation the indian union is based on the principles of federalism let us go back to the seven features of federalism mentioned above we can see that all these features apply to the provisions of the indian constitution the constitution originally provided for a two tier system of government the union government or what we call the central government representing the union of india and the state governments later a third tier of federalism was added in the form of panchayats and municipalities as in any federation these different tiers enjoy separate jurisdiction the constitution clearly provided a three fold distribution of legislative powers between the union government and the state government thus it contains three lists union list includes subjects of national importance such as defense of the country foreign affairs banking communications and currency they are included in the list because we need a uniform policy on the matters throughout the country the union government alone can make laws relating to the subjects mentioned in the union list state list contains subject of states and the local importance such as policy police trade commerce agriculture and irrigation what is federalism let us get back to the contrast between belgium and sri lanka that we saw in the land chapter you should recall that one of the key changes made in the constitution of belgium was to reduce the power of central government and to give this power to the regional governments regional governments exceeds its belgium even earlier they had their roles and powers but all these powers were given to this government and could be withdrawn by the central government the change that took place in 1993 was that the regional governments were given constitutional power that were no longer depend on the central government thus belgium shifted from unity to federal from of the government 
Srilanka constitutes to be for all practical purposes a unitary system where the national government has all the powers. Tamil leaders want Sri Lanka to become a federal system. Federalism is a system of government in which power is divided between central authority and various constituent unit of country. Usually a federation has two levels of government. One is the government for the entire country that is usually responsible for a few subjects of common national interest. The other are governments at the level of providence or state that look after much of day-to-day -day administrating of their state. Both these level of governments enjoy their power independent of each other. In this sentence, federations are contracted with the unitary governments. Under the unitary system, either there is only one level of government or the subunits are subordinate to the central government. The central government can pass on orders to the provincial or local government. But in the federal system, the central government cannot order the state government to do something. State government has power its own for its which not available to central government. Both these governments are separately answerable to the patient. Let us look at the sum of the key future federalism. First one, there are two or more levels of government. Second one, different tiers of government govern the same citizen, but each tier has the, its own judicial in specific matter of legislation, taxation and administration. The jurisdictions of respective levels or tiers of government are specialized in contribution. So, at the existence and authority of each tier of government is constitutionally guaranteed. The fundamental prevention of the constitution cannot be unitarily changed by one level of government. Such changes require the constant of both of the levels of government. Court have the power to interrupt the constitution and the power of different levels of government. The highest court acts as the empower if disturbs arise between different levels of government in the excess of the respective power. Sources of revenues for both each level government are clearly specified to ensure its financial economy. The federal system thus has dual objective to safeguard and promote unity of country while at the same time accommodate religion diversity. There are two aspects are crucial for the institution and practice of federalism. Governments at different levels should agree to some rules of power sharing. They should also trust that each would be by part of the agreement. An ideal federal system has both aspects, mutual trust and agreement to live together. The extract balance of power between the central and the state government varies from the federation to another. This balance depends mainly on historical content in which the freedom was formed. There are two kinds of routes through which federation has been formed. The first route involves independent state coming together on their own to form a bigger unit. So that by pooling sovereignty and retaining identity, they can increase their security. This type of coming together federation include the USA, Switzerland and Australia. In this first category of federation, all these constituent states usually have equal power and a strong VA versus the federal government. The second route is where a large country decided to divide its power between the constituent states and the national government. India, Spain and the Belgium are examples of this kind of holding together federation. In this second category, the central government tends to be more powerful by versus state. Very often different constituent units for the federation have unequal power. Some units are guaranteed special power. Definitions, nutrition, 
the chemical substances present in food which provide energy and material needed by the body diet the food we normally consume in a day balanced diet a diet containing all the nutrients in adequate quantities deficiency disease diseases which occur due to the deficiency of one or more essential nutrients in the diet quick round up food contains seven components carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals fibers and water carbohydrates and fats provide energy to the body energy giving components proteins are body building components these are required for growth and maintenance of our body vitamins and minerals are protective foods are required in very small quantities these protect the body from disease presence of fibers in food prevents constipation and helps in the process of digestion water is essential for the survival of human beings it helps in movement of substances and maintenance of constant body temperature how things change learning objectives to know about some changes which can be reversed and others which cannot be reversed solubility and saturated solutions the relation between solubility and temperature every day a lot of changes occur in our surroundings a piece of ice when kept in the open changes to water when you add to sugar to water it becomes sweet in taste similarly setting of care from milk is a change a moving bus changes its position with time observe some changes that take place in your daily life weather changes from day to day day changes into night the state of water changes a seed germinates into plant changes from a seeding to a plant the color of fruit changes on repaining leaves falls from trees change color and dry out on cooking raw food changes into cooked food cooked food kept at the temp room temperature sometimes spoils and gives false smell on burning fuels like wood and coal changes into ash and other substances iron articles kept in moist air develop a flasky layer this changes is known as rusting of iron natural fabrics fabrics made of fibers obtained from natural sources are termed as natural fabrics they are further divided into two categories animal fabrics and plant fabrics animal fabrics fabrics originate from animal sources are wool cashmere fur and silk wool is obtained from the fleece of sheep and the hair of yak and camel alpaca gunago and wokana cashmere a clothing fabric is obtained from kashmiri goats fur of various animals such as rabbit beaver mink and muskrat is also used as clothing silk is obtained from silk worm which is large white moth caterpillar plant fabrics fabrics originate from plants are flax rami hemp cotton and jute coconut trees bear coconut fruits which are used in their entirety coconut tree fibers are cleaned smoothened and made into various dolls and toys with beads colored threads to give them a decorative appearance 
synthetic fabrics. Fabrics manufactured in factories using chemicals are called synthetic fabrics. They are also known as artificial fabrics. For example, nylon, polyester, PVC, and terrillion. Notice the difference in the materials of various clothes around yourself. You will find that the seat covers of a car or bus made up up of study fabrics whereas the fabrics used in your dress are soft. History of clothing In ancient times, people used to cover their bodies with bark and big leaves of trees or animal skin furs. People used to just wrap these around various parts of the body in different ways. After people began to settle down in different communities and with the development of agriculture, they learned to weave things and grasses into mats, baskets and other utility items. They also used to twist vines, climbing plants and animal fleas, wool, coat of animals or hair into long strands. These long strands were then woven into fabrics. In India, cotton was grown near the river Ganga during Harappan period. As early as 2500 BC, there are evidence showing flax linen, a plant that gives fibers which were used in Egypt 7000 years ago. In ancient Egypt, cotton and flax were grown near the river Nile and were used for making clothes. At that time, stitching was not known to people. They simply used to drape a big piece of cloth around them. This how sarees worn by women originated in India. Invention of sewing needle led to the stitching of fabric into various types of dresses such as shirts, pants, suits, blouses and skirts. Even today, fabrics like sari, dhoti, lungi, and turban are worn as unstitched clothes. Different types of fabrics. Nowadays, a large variety of fabrics is available. Some are of plant origin, some are of animal origin, and some are man-made, based on the origin. The fabrics can be classified as natural fabrics and synthetic fabrics. Materials of daily use Clothes Learning objectives to know about different types of clothes, clothing materials, develop Permanent of clothing materials, soil and climatic conditions required for the cultivation of plant figure fibers, cotton, jute, protection of clothing materials. People living in different parts of the country and the world via different kind of roads depending upon the weather conditions and the culture. We can identify a person's culture from the clothes worn by him or her. Feel the material of your uniform, shirt, pant or skirt, tie, belt and socks. You will find that all these, all of these are made of different kind of materials. Some are soft and some are coarse. Also, your school uniform changes in different seasons. 
ഇൻ വിൻ്റർ യു വയർ സ്വീറ്റേഴ്സ് വുള്ളൻ പാൻറ്റ് സ്കേട്ട് വുള്ളൻ ബ്ലാസർ ആൻഡ് വുള്ളൻ ഫോക്സ് ഇൻ സമ്മർ യു വ യു വയർ കോട്ടൺ യൂണിഫോം ഇത് അബൗ മെൻഷൻഡ് ഒബ്സർവേഷൻസ് ഷോ ദാറ്റ് ലൈറ്റ് കോട്ടൺ ക്ലോത്ത്സ് ആർ വേൺ ഇൻ സമ്മർ ആൻഡ് ഡാർക്ക് വുള്ളൻ ക്ലോത്ത്സ് ആർ വേൺ ഇൻ വിൻ്റർ ക്ലോത്ത്സ് പ്രൊട്ടക്റ്റ് അവർ ബോഡി ഫ്രം വെതർ കണ്ടീഷൻസ് സച്ച് ആസ് ഹീറ്റ് കോൾഡ് ആൻഡ് റെയിൻ ഗോഡ് ബ്ലസ് യു ദ ഗ്രേറ്റ് മുഗൾസ് ദ മുഗൾസ് എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷഡ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ഇന്ത്യ എംപയർ ആൻഡ് മാനേജ്ഡ് ടു കീപ്പ് ഇറ്റ് വൽ നിറ്റ് ഫോർ ഓവർ ടു സെഞ്ച്വറീസ് ഫർദർ ദ അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേറ്റീവ് സിസ്റ്റം ദ ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് ഔട്ട് ലാസ്റ്റഡ് ദ എയർ റൂൾ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് സിക്സ് മുഗൾ എംബേഴ്സ് ആർ നോൺ ആസ് ദ ഗ്രേറ്റ് മുഗൾസ് ബാബർ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് മുഗൾ എംബറർ വാസ് ബാബർ ഹി റൂൾഡ് വർഗാന ഇൻ സെൻട്രൽ ഏഷ്യ അറ്റ് എ ടൈം വെൻ ദ ലോദി കിങ്സ് വേർ റൂളിംഗ് ഓവർ ദ ഡൽഹി സുൽത്താനേറ്റ് ദ ലോക്കൽ റൂളേഴ്സ് ഇൻവൈറ്റഡ് ബാബർ ടു കം ടു ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് ഡിഫീറ്റ് ദ ലോഡീസ് ബാബർ ഹാഡ് ഹാഡ് എ ലോട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ദ ഫേബിൾഡ് വെൽത്ത് ഓഫ് ഹിന്ദുസ്ഥാൻ ആൻഡ് തോട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ ഗുഡ് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ടു എക്സ്പാൻഡ് ഹിസ് കിങ്ഡം ബാറ്റിൽസ് ഇൻ ഫിഫ്റ്റി സിക്സ് ട്വൻറ്റി സിക്സ് ബാബർ മറ്റ് ഇബ്രാഹിം ലോധി ഇൻ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ബാറ്റിൽ ഓഫ് പാനിപ്പറ്റ് ദ ലോഡി ആർമി വാസ് മെനി ടൈംസ് ബിഗർ ദൻ ദാറ്റ് ഓഫ് ബാബേഴ്സ് ബാബർ ഹൗ അവർ ഹാഡ് എ ബാറ്റിൽ ഹാർഡ് ആൻഡ് കാവൽ കാവൽറി ആൻഡ് എൻ എഫിഷ്യൻറ് artillery he defeated ibrahim lodi and conquered delhi and agra the next year he defeated rana sanga of mewar at kanwa two years later he defeated the afghan chiefs at Gangara these three battles secured babes position in north northern india achievements babar was a brilliant general he was also an accomplished poet and writer his autobiography is called Tuski Babari or Babur Nama. In it, Babar has described the physical features, climate, animals, birds, flowers, fruits and the life of the people and the places he visited. he has also written about his own life in detail find out in which language is babar nama written humayun babar was succeeded by his eldest son humayun the other sons of babar kamran Hindual and Askari were given charge of smaller areas. Difficulties The name Humayun means fortunate, 
but the second mughal emperor had many problems from the start first the kingdom was still without a proper system of administration second kumayon's brothers were dissatisfied with the territories that they had been given third the kingdom was under threat from all sides the rajputs bahadar shah the ruler of gujarat and the afghans were preparing to fight kumayun sher shah the afghan king had established a powerful kingdom in eastern india and wanted to expand it towards northern india battles in 1532 humayun and sher shah met Mm-hmm. on the battlefield for the first time humayun won and captured the fort of chunar in 1534 humayun defeated bahadur shah and captured gujarat and malwa however humayun did not have time to build upon his victories sher shah regrouped and defeated humayun at chowasa and kanauj he chased humayun out of his own kingdom humayun escaped to persia and spent the next next 15 years in exile during this time the sar empire under sher shah regained supreme in india in 1555 humayun returned to india sher shah had died and the sar empire had become weak humayun fought and recaptured the territories he had lost became the mughal ruler once again shortly afterwards he fell from the steps of his library in sher mandal in purana kula and died a few days later he was succeeded by his son akbar the sir empire the sir dynasty was short lived sher shah was its most famous ruler humayun wa sher shah sher shah was the son of an afghan jagirdar in Shasaram Bihar His real name was Farid Khan He was given the title of Sher after he killed a tiger On becoming king he began to be called Sher Shah Sher Shah was a very ambitious man Ambitious man Within a few years he raised a large army and became powerful in the region covered by the present day states of Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal. He defeated Humayun twice and occupied Delhi. Thereafter he annexed territories in the north and organized 
द अडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ हिस् एंपयर अंफॉर्चुनेटी ही रोलड फॉर ए वेरी ब्रीफ पीरियड ही डाइड इन फिफ्टी फोर्टी फाइव एंड वास् बरीड अट साम गो टू पे अचीवमेंट शेष वास् गुड जनरल एंड एन ईवन बेटर अडमिस्ट्रेश दिविल मिलिटरी एंड लैंड रवन्यू अडमिस्ट्रेशन ही इंट्रड्यूस्ड ए न्यू करेंसी ए सिल्वर कोइन कोल्ड द रुपिया He also reduced the custom duties and built an excellent network of roads, including the Grand Trunk Road. All these measures encouraged trade. Many of Shah's reforms were continued by Akbar. Shah was a secular ruler. He followed a policy of religious tolerance. He respected all religions and looked after the welfare of all his subjects. He is often regarded as the forerunner of Akbar. God bless you. Mm. was for of from delhi the governors of bengal revolted frequently in the 14th and 15th centuries the ilyas shahi and the hussein shahi sultans ruled bengal in the 16th century the mughals annexed the kingdom of bengal malwa Dilwar Khan founded the kingdom of Malwa in 1401. The most powerful ruler was Hasan Shah. The sultans of Malwa fought with the rulers Delhi, Jaipur and Gujarat. Malwa was later conquered by Sher Shah. God bless you. Done. Rana Khamir and Rana Kumba Kumha made me war very strong. The gen- greatest ruler of me war was Rana Sangha. He defeated the ruler of Malwa and annexed parts of his territories in 1527 <coughs> babar defeated him in the battle of kannuma janpur malik sarwar was the governor of janpur during the region of firoz shah tugalap taking and when judge of to mess invasion in 398 malik sarwar declared his independence and started the sarki dynasty the most powerful sarki ruler was ibrahim shah sarki in 484 Bahul Lodi conquered Janpur. Bengal was an important center for trade. As it is, the regional kingdoms during the later half of the region of the Delhi Sultans, there are many small kingdoms. in different parts of india some of them had been provinces 
of the sultanate when the sultans become weak these provinces become independent the kingdoms of vijayanagar and pahamani emerged as powerful regional kingdoms kashmir in the early medieval period kashmir was ruled by a hindu dynasty in the 14th century sahamir started a muslim dynasty sain sul abidin also known as buddha was the greatest ruler of kashmir he is popularly called the akbar of kashmir he practiced religious tolerance and partnered education and learning he also encouraged agriculture and new arts and crafts in the late 16th century the mughals annexed kashmir marwar the rados ruled over marwar maharaja jodha founded the city of jodhpur and built the maharaj fort there maharaja maldava was another powerful ruler mewar mewar was ruled by the sisodia rajaputs of political stability stability to the country this led an increase in the trade and the rapid growth of towns and cities trade led to a greater interaction between people from different parts of the world india borrowed many things from the cultures of their countries during the medieval period islam spread in india the bhakti and the sufi movements spread the message of devotion to god and kindness towards all human beings you will read more about these two movements in chapter sources just like the ancient period information on the medieval period is derived from two main sources archaeological and literary there is an abundance of sources for this period the books written during this period are available to us and the monuments that were constructed still stand that is why we know much more about the medieval period than the ancient period archaeological sources archaeological sources available to us include temples palaces mosques forts tombs coins in prestations utensils tools weapons ornaments and paintings they give us an idea of the political social and economic history of the time many rulers particularly in south india encouraged temple building temples thus are a rich source of religious and cultural history 
painting for another valuable souls as they tell us about the customs food habits dress and jewelry of the period coins are very important for the study of the medieval period they give us data of important political events a book on coins titled dryaya parikasha was written during the religion of ala alauddin kalji it leads the coins mitered during the region of the sultan in scriptures from south india record proclamations by kings kings and gifts to temples and led landmen some of these inscriptions are recorded on copper plates and some are in scribed on temple walls hmm. the medieval world the study of the past is divided into periods the period that lies between the ancient and the modern periods of history is known as the middle or medieval period in india the medieval period stretched from the beginning of the 18th to the end of the 18th century that is for nearly 1100 years the 18th century is generally taken as the beginning because society economy politically religion and culture underwent many changes during this century similarly the 18th century witnessed still more changes making the end of the medieval and the beginning of the modern period the medieval period is divided into early medieval period and <coughs> late medieval period the early medieval period stretched from the 18th to the 13th century the palas pradadas rashtagu rast rashtra kutas rashtra kutas cholas and the rajaputs were the powerful ruling dynasties is during this period the late medieval period lasted from the 13th to the 18th century it covered the rule of the turks the afghans and the mughals the many names of india our country is commonly referred to as bharat india or hindustan it is however interesting to note that india was known by different names at different points in history bharata varasha and jam jambudva are two of the earliest names by which our country was known in ancient times india was also known as the land of the people 
who lived along the river Sindhu. The Sanskrit word Sindhu was pronounced Hindu in old Persian and Hindu in French become Hindu. This word came into English as India. The way we understand Hindustan today is quite different from what it was understood in medieval times. For example, according to some medieval scholars, Hindustan comparised territories that were a part of the Delhi Sultanate. On the other hand, Bapur, the founder of the Mughal Emperor, used the term Hindustan to describe the geography and the natural vegetation of the subcontinent. It was only in the 19th century during the British Raj that Hindustan came to be used synonymously with India. Major historical developments. The medieval period in India is characterized by some important developments. The coming of the Muslims led to the growth of a mixed, mixed culture. There was interaction between North and South India and between the Hindus and the Muslims. The cultural exchanges led to the growth of a culture that was above regional and caste differences. It was an Indian culture. The Muslim dynasties, particularly the Mughals, provided many centuries of Hi students, we are going to learn about water. Water plays an important role in our daily life. Everyone needs water. From where does the water come, teacher? Water comes mainly from rain. Water is made up of two gases. They are called oxygen and hydrogen. Teacher, water is very much essential in our lives. It is essential, essential because we can't live without water. Water is our basic need. Teacher, is all water safe to drink? No, all water is not safe to drink. It is better to drink boiled water. We can avoid many diseases in this way. Teacher, uh, what is the shape of water? Water flows from a higher level to a lower level. We're going out, hanging out like Whatever We are new hardly party people Ladies, the bad get dressed I go advice in our minds And your body feels great I like a good body I know you like your big feet let us pass, go be sweet And you know what you need You are from my space I hear the sound of your 
I can't resist your touch, dress in your pretty black lips. Just come on, say why? But you brought me up here. Maybe I'm just a little dry. Maybe you're just a little What's your name, little angel? Are you devil in the skies? Oh, 